Okay. So books were a challenge uh, as a child, as a young person. What, what do books mean to you now? Because they feature quite a bit in your work. Mm, yeah, I'm kind of... Um, I am very much an avid reader of uh, academic research. Uh, to talk about my shows on here, so kind of getting around racial politics is very much part of my reading material. A broad range of stuff around racial politics. And but over over the last, say the last thirty years, I have been uh, reading quite e extensively. So what they mean to me now is a source of information, very much. Feed some of it's confirming some of the information I know, but then it is feeding me fresh in information, uh, and I really enjoy reading kind of. Uh, getting information from books what I just didn't know but it's, uh, sometimes it's a, an odd one with books is that you can read something and like I say it confirms something you have a sense about but then equally uh, there's a whole range of new information what's coming in uh, and then that feeds uh, my practice and research for my practice uh, and like you say books feature heavily within my show and work and part of that is I see books as a gift for me in terms of, one, the ability to read. But then I think equally uh, my use of the books in the, my work is about offering it as a gift for the viewer so they can see potential titles to inform themselves with. But it is part of the sculptural work as well, so I want you to appreciate it as part of the sculptural uh, element of the work. But equally... Uh, I'd expect people to either take a photograph of the cover and do their own research as well. Mm -hmm. And politics, um, I mean, what's your view of um, Black Lives Matter? Because that, again, is something that runs through as a strand um, in your work. It's almost uh, that question, what's my view for Black Lives Matter? It's almost a, an obvious statement to me, clearly being a black person, so I know my lives matter. And, but I assume more the question is more about the movement. Is that, you, is that what you're asking? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very valid movement. I think it's uh, clearly, it's almost like say, the obvious thing to me and yourself as a black person that yeah, clearly our lives matter. This movement has cemented a more political movement, what people can attach themselves to, and it clearly has an impact on a, a wider political conversation. So I support it to a uh, lesser greater degree. I'm, I've been on a kind of the gathering in Nottingham when we, 2020, uh, I've not necessarily done a great deal of uh, protests and gathering, which has not necessarily been my thing. I think my form of protest, if if that is the appropriate word, is through my practice and through my conversations within my practice as well. Do you think artists should be political? I personally think yes. Uh, obviously, I am uh, within my work, and I think uh, a lot of artists should do. I see, as you know, I see a lot of art. I've curated a number of shows and see many exhibitions. And obviously, studying with art, uh, artists who either are artists and studying, so I know you get to know their practice. But people make art for a range of reasons, and some are happy with a elements of their work just being quite decorative and very personal uh, it's choices. Uh, I think it's it is quite common for, say, uh, black artists to uh, take on a more political narrative within their practice. But equally, I accept uh, they can be uh, they can have a decorative narrative as, mu as much as any other artist. Mm. We'll come back to the politics, um, but first I want to talk about uh, you as an artist. When did you first begin to see yourself as an artist? Again, my, my artist career and education has been probably more protracted than most artists. So I've done kind of night school classes, foundation courses and degree and MA. But that's over almost a 40 year period where some kind of are doing MAs at the age of 20. Um, so I, I came out of school, I'd say if 
I don't know, it, 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 it's part responsibility as me as an individual, but then uh, some of it is probably guidance as a young person. So if somebody had acknowledged and recognised, say, my creativity and say, Michael, you're very talented in this way, you should pursue your art, then I may have pursued it with more focus at a lot early age. I've kind of discovered it myself through, like say, night school classes and then doing well on that and then a foundation course. Um, but actually using the term artist, I've pretty much been using it for, say, the last 25, 30 years. But it's only really, actually, over the last five years, because I've done a range of things. I've worked, obviously, if, you know, I've kind of worked at Primary and New Art Exchange and curated another show, a number of shows. But over the last five years, I've pretty much committed to art practice here and going forward. And... And that makes a different, significant difference. Like say, going to the Royal College of Art to do the MA, that was very impactful on my practice and a commitment to my practice to take it to the next level. And what is the next level? Next level now for me is still developing my art practice, further research. Um, like say, from what I got from studying at RCA and it's a range of things. Studying at the RCA, research for my dissertation, which I did on uh, metaphysics and blackness through the work of Kerry James Marshall. So doing all that reading, re uh, research, developing my practice really highlighted for me that there's all, there's an, all n the next level to go to within my practice. And clearly my practice is here where it is now I do, I present, uh, I make digital sketches of new work I want to make. But again, equally, I want that to be strong work, but equally well-researched and um, well-thought-through work. So the next level for me is uh, just, like I say, developing my practice further. Um, academically, I don't rule out a PhD at some point, but again, some of that may be practice as well as curatorial as well. Uh, still yet to define that really. You talked about um, it, it taking you a while to uh, uh, see yourself as an artist. That, that support wasn't there earlier. Um, do you think that's got anything to do with the fact that you're a black man? Do you, do you think, why do you feel you didn't get that support, that development support earlier in your career? Uh, I think it's a range of, I think, like say, in terms of uh, parenting and kind of being brought up with foster parents who had, like say, no commitment to further education beyond you go through school and then you, you get a job, whatever, for their own children as well as their foster children. Um, Underst yeah, probably understanding that there's an art world out there. It took me a significant period to understand there is a wider art world and to get into it has took me quite a while. I think regionally, I think being based in Nottingham, as a lot of artists, you almost are invisible on that national stage and international stage being in the city. Even now, so I historically, I can see that that would have had an impact. Uh, and then it's that full commitment to what is uh, what is being an artist. So you even almost have to, you learn for your practice, but you have to learn what is an artist and being an artist, and that took quite a while. Um, uh, I, I talk about Kerry James Marshall in terms of my dissertation, but I was watching a number of videos of him prior to going back to the RCA. And he pretty much said the same. He wanted to get his work and practice to a level that it was in museums around the world. And he knew that he had to get his work to that standard to get it into a position where curators would consider him and select his work. There is obviously the narrative, as we know, and from about the art world being obviously uh, kind of exclusive and selective in many ways and uh, black artists getting their voice in there and getting shown has been historically challenging still to date but there are clearly 
things opening up from Sonia winning the Golden Line at Venice and the range of artists who are now getting profile. But when you look at those artists, you'll see they're in their eight, they're 60 years old and they're not uh, 20, 22 coming out of art school with MAs and their career were taken off from there, which you can cite clearly a range of other artists. They, their career takes off from 22 onwards. Mm. What made you decide to become an artist? You know, what attracted you to this field? I think one of the is I've, I enjoy the process of making art. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, it is very much about a process and then enjoying that process. So if I didn't enjoy the process, then I wouldn't pursue it. Uh, I enjoy you can generate a conversation through your work and practice. I really enjoyed that. And you can make something from nothing, whether it's a painting, a sculpture, photography. I enjoy that. And more recently, again, I take my learning from a range of people. So I even have mentors on YouTube who I've never met or I've kind of uh, never met in person or may have occasionally seen on the stage and YouTube. But there's uh, one guy, and I'd recommend for a lot of people to consider his name's John, John D. Martini, and he talks about value factors and having what's really important to you as an individual and making sure that is your, you follow that through uh, in terms of on a day to day basis, but as a, either career or you as an individual in your life path. So, what's important to you? Creativity, contemporary art practice. Uh, I'll see that I'm a father and I'm a grandfather, so my family and my my son and grandkids and my immediate family is important to me. Um, next step for me in kind of art practice is very much developing my art practice and supporting other artists. And that, that let's say, primary, we've set up primary where there's 50 artists in there. Uh, I'm a co-founder of that, so me and five other people set that up. So it's about supporting other people in their career development. Um, Next step is, like I say, further research and academic research from a practice and generating income. I am not a young man and I do want to generate, I don't have a pension, so uh, generating income from a practice is important as well. Have you always enjoyed your art? Has there been any period where you think, you know, I'm, I'm done with this? I think I came to, that's a good question, because what I, the reason I got to a point, so I was a part of the Diaspora Pavilion in Venice, the Biennale, but my practice was, at that point was following a post-colonial narrative. And, and I think I got to a point almost boxed myself or painted myself into a corner with that narrative. And I was always behind somebody like Yinka Shanibar, John Okofra, Barbara Walker to a degree. So. I could see myself either just part following, not necessarily following their practice, but I was not necessarily developing my own voice within it. And so that's after the diaspora in 2017, my own voice was about, I could see that there's a, a range of con conversations around contemporary art, pra contemporary racial politics, what are not being explored and developed. And, and that's where I, I seen, I, I wanted to take my own work really uh, around racial politics and um, not sure that last question whether I answered it. What was it? What was the question? Uh, I was asking you about um, have you always enjoyed your art? I think that was the question that I, I asked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, but it, it, the part, the point there I, was make, I think I was making is that it's enjoying it to a degree where you push and push, but then, like I said, previous question about the next level, because there will always be a next level unless you just end up kind of reproduced and reproducing similar sort of work. Uh, and so that's, like I say, why I went to RCA, because I knew there was another level for me. And by understanding this logo, that's exciting for me. Um, the potential of making new work, potential of further research is exciting, so. 
that's where the enjoyment comes from. Mm -hmm. um, go 